This is the new Peugeot 308. It's a third generation of Peugeot's family car and it's had a massive overhaul in every department. In this video, we're gonna talk you through all the changes in detail. But before we start, make sure you're subscribed to our channel so you can see all of our new car reveals and reviews every week. And if you do wanna buy a new car, go to whatcar.com to save yourself thousands. Let's start here at the badge. You'll notice it's different from before. Completely different, in fact. It's a new logo said to be inspired by the French manufacturer's heritage and is familiar to what we saw with the e-legend concept car from 2018. It's actually the 11th logo used by Peugeot since 1850, and this 308 is the very first car that will have it fitted. The massive badge at the front also hides the radar sensors that are used for the car's driving aids too. But enough about the badge and more about the design of the 308. And you can see that the front end here does really strongly resemble other cars in Peugeot's lineup, like the 208, the 508, and also its SUVs. And the reason it does look similar is because it has this same fang-like LED light strip on the front of the car. The 308 also has quite slim headlights and a really big grille too. Plus, it has what feels like a really long curved bonnet. And also this windscreen is quite heavily raked. Now, this is in a class of car that isn't necessarily known for its head turning designs, but there are some seriously big sellers that it's up against. So we're talking about cars like the VW Golf, the Seat Leon, and the Ford Focus. So how do you think the 308 looks compared to those rivals. Do you think it's really good? Do you think it's really bad? Make sure you tell us in the comments below. Now, size-wise, this 308 is bigger than the previous 308. So there's 50 millimeters more room between the front and the rear wheels. And overall, there's 110 millimeters in the length of the car. It's also 20 millimeters lower to give it a bit of a sportier look. If you're wondering about the wheels, there's 16, 17, or 18 inch alloys to choose from. At the back, you've got this more prominent spoiler than you had on the previous 308 to again, help try and give it a more sporty look to go with that lowered ride height. And you've got these cool lights that have this wrap around light bar effect, but there aren't actually any lights in this middle bit. So all it does is kind of neatly join up these two sides. And there are other creases and interesting lines going on at the back. So the rear of the car is quite interesting to look at, but look. These chrome exhausts are totally fake. What a letdown. But there is good news in the boot because it's very big by class standards. Now at 412 liters, it's actually smaller than the previous 308, but it's bigger than the Golf, the Leon, the Focus. It's one of the biggest in the class, if not quite so big as the properly enormous Skoda Octavia. And you can see really simple shape back here. No wheel arch intrusion, no lumps in the floor. There isn't much in the way of underfloor storage. We're in a 308 with the upgraded sound system and it's also a plug-in hybrid, so that takes up some of the space here. But in other models, you do get a bit of underfloor storage space. But still, really easy, big shape, very good by class standards. You can, of course, fold down the rear seats to further increase the load capacity, but the seats only fold down 60-40. So that means that these two seats fold down as one chunk, and then this outer seat folds down on its own. Some other rivals offer 40-20-40 split folding rear seats, which means you can fold each of the three seats individually. But what you do get in the 308 is this bit here with a couple of cup holders and then a hatch that gives you easy access to the boot or helps you put your skis through the middle bit in here. But what about the rear seat space? Because in the previous 308, that was a real standout negative of the car. It was really stingy on space in the back. But now you can see it is a definite improvement. Knee room, pretty good. Leg room, I've got enough space to stretch out and headroom is okay too. I'm just under six foot and I could sit back here relatively comfortably for a long journey. These windows do feel a bit small though and this high window line makes them feel even smaller than they actually are as well. It doesn't feel really spacious in the back here like a Skoda Octavia does, but it's still definitely an improvement from before. Up front in the 308, you get a similarly snazzy look and layout as you do in lots of other new Peugeot products, but there are some differences. So you get this 10 inch touchscreen infotainment system, but below it, there's this new touchscreen panel that houses some of the shortcut buttons for the infotainment system. 
You can also configure them so it shows different ones depending on what you want. Now, this is technically a pre-production 308, so it's not entirely fair to judge the infotainment system on this car because we've still got to wait until we get hold of a product that's actually able to drive. But from what we can see here, it does still seem like this system is quite fiddly to use. Now, that was something we criticised in the old 308, and it does look like, even though they've updated lots of things with this car, and the look and the layout of the infotainment system is different, it's still quite fiddly to just find what you need. There's a lot of swiping involved, a lot of menus and sub-menus, although I suppose it is good that they've made these really big, easy shortcut buttons on this new panel down here. There's also still some physical controls, so you've got these keys down here and a volume dial next to it. Plus, you get wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto as standard across the lineup. So you can always just bypass Peugeot's infotainment software and just use the functions on your phone instead. You've got another new look for the drive selector. So you use this toggle to go from reverse, neutral and drive, but then you've got these two buttons here. Now, we are very well used to these slightly odd small Peugeot steering wheels that they use in every other car in their lineup. But what's encouraging in the 308 is that it looks like some of the problems we have with this steering wheel in other cars isn't on the new 308. So with the small steering wheel and a digital driver display that's placed above it, in a lot of other Peugeot products we find that it's very easy to have the top of the steering wheel blocking your view of the driver display. But in the 308, I'm actually struggling to put the steering wheel and seat in a position where it does block the driver display. So it looks like that's something that Peugeot has really listened to the feedback and worked on to try and make sure it's not a problem in this new car. So that is good. You've got a very good chance of sitting where you want and still being able to see the driver display really, really clearly. There is apparently 34 litres of storage dotted around in various different places. And generally, in this interior, the fit and finish, the quality of the materials, if you think that this is going to be challenging some of the mainstream rivals like the VW Golf and the Ford Focus, then this will certainly be towards the top of the class compared to those rivals. Under the metal, the car shares its mechanical underpinnings with the Citroen C5 Aircross, Vauxhall Grandland X and DS7 Crossback. So, like those cars, it's compatible with petrol, diesel and electrified powertrains. In the 308 lineup, there's no manual gearbox offering, it's automatic only. But there's a now very familiar 1.2-litre three-cylinder petrol with 128 brake horsepower, as well as a 1.5-litre diesel with the same power. But you might be more interested in the plug-in hybrid options available with the 308, and there's going to be two of them. They both pair a four-cylinder turbocharged petrol engine with an electric motor, and they both have a 12.4 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery. And the maximum claimed WLTP electric-only range is 37 miles, which is pretty good compared to what else is out there at the minute. You can also get a full charge from a seven kilowatt wall box in just under two hours. There is also thought to be a fully electric E308 in the works, and there's still some decisions to be made about a performance-focused PSE-badged four-wheel drive hot hybrid version, which could have around 300 brake horsepower, but there won't be a 308 GTI. On the safety side of things, the available driver assistance systems include a semi-automatic lane changing function that can actually overtake the car in front after the driver agrees to a prompt. And there's also an adaptive cruise control that adjusts your speed when going around corners. That's in addition to a 360 degree parking camera, a blind spot monitoring system, lane keeping assistance and automatic emergency braking that can recognise cyclists and pedestrians even at night. Now the trims are yet to be fully confirmed by Peugeot but expect them to have a familiar layout to them. So that should start with Allure, then Allure Premium, GT with range topping GT Premium at the top of the lineup. And on those higher trim levels, you'll get things like massaging seats and also this frameless rear view mirror, which on the hybrid models apparently has an LED light in it, which gently lights up when you're running on electric power alone. As for the pricing, well, it's still too early for a real steer on that. But if it wants to be really competitive in this class, then the 308 will need to be there or thereabouts on pricing with the big hitters that it's up against. So the new Peugeot 308 goes on sale in the UK later this year and it does look like it's got a pretty good chance of making a big impact in a really competitive class. We're certainly looking forward to driving it and to make sure that you can watch that full review once we've driven it, subscribe to our channel. And please do tell us what you think of the car in the comments below. Also, if you're looking to buy a new car, don't forget, go to whatcar.com to save yourself thousands. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.